almost asked our teenagers the question of why did Jesus asked a Samaritan woman for a drink, and one of the responses dryly was, because he was a well thirsty. I'm <laughs> sorry. Tell me something about yourself. Um, I recently changed jobs, and um, uh, one evening I was chatting to some of the uh, other guys, and one of the directors turned to me and said, tell, no, tell me something about yourself, I don't know. And he said, I've been on tomorrow's world. Now, for a certain age of people who don't know who tomorrow's world is, I won't say. <laughs> tomorrow's world is a, was a program on the BBC that would showcase or demonstrate new technologies or new ideas. And uh, we were on it, or I was on it, with my uh, then technical director. So if you want to find out, ask me. But another thing that um, we were talking about this during the prayer time is that there is a, a question that sometimes you get asked. It's the most complicated question you ever get asked. And invariably the answer is a lie. Who knows what the question is? Somebody said it, a couple of people said it. How are you? The most complicated question you can ever get asked because invariably you'll say, fine. <laughs> That's utter nonsense. <laughs> That's nonsense. So, last week well, I was talking, was I talking about that? I was talking about last week as well. 316, for God so loved the world. And basically the text was broken down into, um, it reminds us that salvation is not something we can earn. It's something we are freely given. Jesus' death on the cross was not a random event, but it was a purposeful, purposeful sacrifice for our sins. And that God's so love is available to all people regardless of their race, gender or background. Now that thing is carried over into John 4, Woman of the Well. So let's set the scene. Jesus is on his way from Judea down to Galilee, and this takes him through Samaria. Now normally the Jews wouldn't do this. They would go the long way round, and it was uncommon for him to do this. Because, as some of you know, the Jews and the Gentiles did not get on at all. And so the Samaritans were seen as inferior to the Jews. So they, they, there was a bit of tension in that. And he stops at a well in Samaria, and it's midday. And a woman comes to draw water from the well, and Jesus asks her for a drink. She's surprised. Jewish man to speak to a Samaritan woman. And then Jesus tells her that, about the living water that will quench her thirst forever. Now, this woman is not an ordinary woman, as we find out. The fact that she came alone to draw water during the midday sun gives us an answer, a question about, well, why was that? Because normally, the women of the town and village would come and draw water first thing in the morning because it was cool to them. And there was a time when they could have a chat, catch up on each other, how you doing, yes, I've got problems at home, and all, all that. But she came on her own during the hottest part of the day. Because of her circumstances, she was ostracised and shunned by the rest of her town and village. She was marked as immoral because she was living with an un she was unmarried. But instead of judging her, Jesus meets her where she is at an officer, officer of the gift of eternal life. See, I love this story because it shows no matter what our past looks like, Jesus will always meet us where we are at and give us a fresh start in our lives. Doesn't matter how many mistakes we've made or how far we've wandered from God, Jesus meets us in our brokenness and offers us the living water. The story emphasises the universal reach of Jesus' saving grace. The fact that Jesus, a Jewish man, speaks to a Samaritan woman, who has had multiple husbands, living with someone who's not a husband, highlights the inclusiveness of Jesus' message. In a culture where Samaritan Jews did not typically interact, and they were considered inferior, Jesus reaches out to this woman and offers her eternal life. This shows us that there is no one who is beyond the reach of God's grace, and that Jesus' message is meant for everyone, regardless of who they are. And there's more to this story than just about forgiveness. It's about stepping out of the comfort zone. You see, after Jesus tells this woman about the living water, she runs back to her village and tells everyone she meets about this amazing man she's met. And guess what? They believe her and come to see Jesus for themselves. 
The simple fact of this woman's testimony leads an entire village to faith. Now, I don't know about you, but I always, I'm always a bit uncomfortable with sharing my faith with us. In the family, in here, that's easy to share it with my family. But it can be awkward and intimidating sometimes about where I'm at work or where I'm at street parks, how people will react to my faith. But this woman didn't let her fear hold her back. She was so excited about what Jesus had done for her that she couldn't help sharing it with others. The importance of stepping outside our comfort zones to share our faith with others. The woman at the well runs back to a village and tells everyone she meets her. Everybody that had ostracised her, cast her to one side, thought she was immoral. She didn't care. She heard something on her life that changed her so dramatically that she just wanted to tell everybody about it. Our faith is meant to be shared and our testimonies, my testimony, is an, has an important impact on others. One of the things I had to learn was my testimony. Now what that means is that when I did street pastoring, the thing you have to remember, the thing you have to learn is, what's your testimony? I need you to remember your testimony because it's the most powerful thing you can ever tell anybody. And I broke it down into two hours, two minutes and two sentences. So if you had to share an afternoon or a morning with somebody, could you delve deep into your past, your testimony in two hours? easy. You can talk about the faith, your journey, your experiences. How about two minutes? This was a challenge we had for the street passes. If you could you get across your, your testimony in two minutes to somebody, because invariably that's all we have on average when we're talking to people. What about two sentences? Could you explain your faith, your testimony in two sentences? And the one I usually give to the young people is two words. Could you explain your testimony in two words? Because it's so important in how we deal with these, how we just communicate the love of Christ to other people. Our faith, the grace he has given us. Matthew 28 says this, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. As Christians we are called to go out into the world and make disciples of everyone, all nations. This often means stepping outside of our comfort zone to share the message of Jesus with those who may have not heard it before, may not know who Christ is. We don't have to have all the answers or be perfect Christians to share our faith. We just have to be willing to step out in faith and trust that God will use our words and actions to touch somebody else in life. The story reminds us that Jesus is the ultimate source of satisfaction. The woman of the world may have been looking for love and fulfilment in all the wrong places. We don't know. But it wasn't until she met Jesus that she found something that she was possibly looking for. We live in a world that bombards us with the need to chase money, success, pleasure, and all these different things. But no matter how much we accumulate or achieve or we look for, there's always, there's always something with a sense of long inside us. We were made to find our satisfaction in God, not in things of this world. And the woman of the world had been searching for love and fulfillment in all the wrong places. But it wasn't until she encountered Jesus that she found him. And this highlights our deepest longings can only be satisfied by God. Pursuit of worldly things will ultimately leave us feeling an empty. Matthew 6, he says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. It was a revelation to me when I suddenly realised that. Put God at the centre of your life and everything else just goes out there. How many times do we actually move God aside and put something else there that we st our faith starts to shake? Once we get God back there, somebody once said to me, what's the most priority relationship in your life? And I said, my relationship with God. I said, what about a man who was in that? My relationship with God is my primary focus because from that, then my relationship with everything else goes. What you say, what you do, how you act, flows from that relationship with God. Are we looking for satisfaction in the wrong places? Are we chasing things that will leave us feeling empty? 
I encourage you to come to Jesus and drink from the living water he offers. He alone can quench the thirst of our deepest souls. The passage reminds us to value everybody as a person created in the image of God, regardless of their background and social status. Just as Jesus broke down cultural barriers to reach out to the Samaritan woman, we are called to love and serve people from every walk of life, showing them the same respect and dignity that Jesus showed the woman at the well. It encourages us to share the message of the gospel with others, even when they may seem unlikely that they will respond positively. The woman at the well was initially surprised that Jesus was speaking to her. As invariably, when I used to do other bits and pieces, he said, who are you to speak to me? Right? And the people go, oh. because I'm compelled to. But his kindness and compassion win people over. And from that Jesus, she became a powerful witness for him in her community. He didn't go into the town. She did. He didn't do the wandering around and evangelizing. She did. She wasn't eloquent in her words, but she was eloquent in her faith and compassion and grace and where she found Christ in her life. We too can share the message of God's love and salvation for those around us, trusting that God can use our words and actions to bring faith to others. Think of the people in the Bible. Moses, I love Moses. When God called Moses, Moses is saying, who am I? Like, I'll get tongue-tied and stuff like this. And God's saying, don't worry about that. Just do as I ask. Go, and I will give you the words to say. We too can come to Jesus with our deepest needs and struggles. Initially, the woman of the world was defensive when Jesus asked her about her personal life. She didn't tell him anything. But he gently and compassionately revealed his knowledge of the situation, which led to her transformation. We can come with our deepest needs and struggles, but we can trust that he knows us better than we know ourselves in ways that we cannot possibly imagine. If you are, if you are feeling unloved and unworthy this morning, if you are feeling unloved and unworthy of God's love this morning, come find us. John, Janet, me, prayer team at the back. Come sit with us and we will tell you the good news. I encourage you, don't leave this place without making it right with God, without making it right with you. And if during this morning somebody's name has popped into your head, that may be something that God dropped in that little seed into your head. Go and speak to them, bring them up, share a coffee with them. And who knows your testimony? It may bring somebody else to them. I finally figured out, somebody said to me, why do you do what you do? And yesterday afternoon, I finally figured out, I do what I do. Because I don't want anybody to be sat in the darkness. But I want them to walk in the freedom of light of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your unconditional love and grace that you pour upon us. Help us to treat others with love and respect, regardless of our differences where we come from. Help us, give us strength to just step out of our comfort zones. Let's trust in you. Help us to see ourselves and to see others as you see us. We give you thanks for this morning, Lord, that in some way we all 